Welcome to Hopefully Have It number two. Okay, so we're going to talk about some Native Erasure. There's still Native American Erasure still happening on TikTok. And um, there are people putting up a good fight. And they're, um, they're doing a good job, you know. But um, still not enough as far as I'm concerned. And it bothers me to no end that my other half of my culture, my black half, is the ones doing this shit. Now, a couple of years back, it was the white people doing it. And now, it's the black people doing it. And it's like the natives can't catch a break. You know. So, I think that it would help if everyone would, like, tune into these people. Now, here's the thing. And I'm going to make this as short as possible because we're drawing a native superhero. Just debating on if it should be Warpath or American Eagle. And since he's so close to Danielle Moonstar, we're going to make it Warpath. So, you know, the thing is, this shit is making it harder for people like me, who are mixed with Native and Black, to reconnect with people of the Native community, because now they're going to want to know, what the hell do we want? I've said this before in the video, so I'll say it again. I just want to be acknowledged that I have Native ancestry. I do not need to re-enroll in a tribe. That is not like my, my end goal. My only end goal is to actually be acknowledged that I am part of the tribe. Now, um, if they want to... Um, enroll me, or if they want to offer me enrollmentship, I don't really know how it works. Um, my great-grandmother only taught me about folklore. I talked to my aunt today, and they, she explained to me the only thing she ever really did was cry all the time. Whenever they asked her why was she always crying, she always told them, don't worry about it, kids need to stay in grown folks' business. Excuse me, kids need to not be in grown folks' business. And I learned that today from my Aunt Ruth. And, um, you know, they grew up with her. And um, she died in 83, making me 10 years old. And I only got to see her in the summertime. You know, so I never really got to do a lot of um, things like traditional Native stuff. We never got to do that shit. We were pretty much raised black, you know. And like I said, if you haven't heard any of this before, I didn't even know I was part of Native until I was in the fifth grade when a black teacher, Miss Comrade, God rest her soul, is the one that pointed it out. And she was like, you're going to carve this soap because you're part Native. And I looked at that woman like she was crazy. And I literally told her, that she was crazy. And I said, ma'am, I'm not part native. I'm part black and I'm part white. And by that, it was because I didn't know that my parents were mixed at the time. But I found out, you know, as most mixed kids find out their heritage, it's not something that we can really just run around and tell everybody, you know. And I would have never found out that I was part native. Until Miss Conrad pointed that shit out. Had she not pointed it out, it had never been a thing to me. I mean, eventually it probably would have happened. But for the most part, it, it, it wasn't like it was like something in my day-to-day -day life. Yeah, it wasn't like, hey, we got our native ancestors still talking to us and stuff. And No. My grandmother on my dad's side, she cooked for a living. Her mother, the actual native, cleaned for a living. And like I said, I only got to deal with them during the summertime. 
No. I didn't know nothing else about it. And I damn sure didn't ask about it, because, you know, when you're a kid, what the fuck do you do? You know? And so, I just went on with life. You know, not thinking anything about it at all, actually. But, eventually, I'd have had to learn. And I did. It made sense later about all the stories that my great-grandmother would tell me about how she didn't really go to school and that her and her brother ran through the forest. Kind of found out today that my grandmother had more than one brother and other siblings. So, you know, I'm learning stuff bit by bit, but that's not the point of this video. I just wanted to add that in. There was a lot of Native erasure happening on TikTok. And part of the reason why I'm drawing these um, Marvel Natives is because all of the people that I follow on TikTok that promote comic books and shit like that don't ever talk about the Natives. They don't ever put them in the battle gauntlets. They don't do anything has anything to do with Natives, like at all. Which hurts my feelings, which is also technically a form of indigenous erasure. Which really fucking sucks because there are a lot of Native heroes that people just have no fucking idea exist. And they would if some of the Natives on Native TikTok would also point this shit out. I mean, I can't be the only one. But, you know, there are a lot of Natives that I follow on TikTok. Now, granted, they do more important shit. MMIP is much more important than people knowing about Warpath and Thunderbird, without a doubt. But if you're part native like me, and you like comic books, you should at least have one native hero. You don't have to agree with that statement, but you should at least have one native hero. No, at least one. Okay? And again, you don't have to agree with me. But you should at least have one Native hero. And if you're a Generation Xer, like myself, I can point you into quite a few. Again, even though that's not what this video is supposed to be about. I'm going to point you into quite a few, actually. First one I'm going to point you into is the first one that I knew which was still up for a question, which is John Blackstar. All right. The second one I knew was Charlie Ironknife, codenamed Spirit from the G.I. Joe cartoon. All right. And there's like two other guys on the team, but I don't know who they are. Now, to the point of the video. Indigenous ratio needs to stop. I am mad as hell that one part of my culture has decided out of the blue that they are going to erase the other part of my culture. It's still happening. It hasn't stopped. And it's pissing me off. And I mean, it's pissing me off to the highest point of festivity because one, it's not a lot I can do about it. That's the main part. Two, my other half of my culture, my black side, is the one doing it. And so I have every right to chime in. And I do because it pisses me the fuck off. And it makes me even more angry is because I'm kind of quite in the middle. You know, I acknowledge the fact that I am black. You know, I acknowledge that fact all fucking heartedly. But I don't deny any of my ethnic heritages. There are videos here where I have said, and I'll say it again, 
hold my hand to the fire. There are some times where I am ashamed to be black. And then I have had videos where there was sometimes I'm ashamed to be the tiniest bit of white. There's only one video where I say I am ashamed to be native. And I'll tell you another thing. Up before TikTok, man, you know, having to prove my Native American heritage was never a fucking thing. It wasn't like I was actually like, oh, I'm going to go get this land. Nah, I don't want any of that shit. Just acknowledge the fact that I have Native blood. I'm good there. I am good there because that's all I really want. You know, just acknowledgement that I exist and that I have Native blood. The rest of that shit can kiss ass. You know, I'm 50 years old, so going to school for free, that's no longer an option. Um, other issues, things that we need to worry about that's happening in the Native community that nobody seems to be acknowledging. Like the fact that um, these uh, aboriginals or these wannabe natives don't ever talk about Native issues. They're never on the front line for MMIP. Hell, they don't even talk about folklore. So, um, kind of sucks. There's Warpath and Danny Moonstar. James Proudstar, Danielle Moonstar. That's all I'm going to do for that. I'll work on it again another time. I want to end this video with this. There are a lot of things that we can do in this world. Being a culture vulture shouldn't be a thing. Again, you can look at me and tell that I was mixed. I've been mixed for 50 fucking years. Technically 45, because you know, those first few years of school, no one really knows. Of course, the white kids I went to school with, they knew. And the black kids knew. But I was that idiot. They just didn't fucking know. You know. I just didn't fucking know. It never dawned on me why my parents looked different. Never, never dawned on me. Never thought about it. Didn't care. You know. And um, at the end of the day, I still had to go home. Back to the projects. I was raised mostly black. But I'm not going around hollering, I'm 95% native and 5% black. No, I'm pretty sure that's not how that works. But, you know, like I said, I'm not trying to reconnect to get anything out of it outside of one thing. Yes, you are part native. I'm done right after that. Right after that. It's like, yeah, you're part native. We got a paper of lineage. That's all I need. Give me that paper of lineage. And then I'm done with the pretendians on TikTok. I'm done with everything. Like, yo, you have 5 to 10%. Cool. And they'll probably tell me, you don't have enough blood quantum to be enrolled. Which is what, I, what, what the main thing I'm expecting. I'm expecting that right off the bat. I'm literally expecting them to tell me, you don't have enough native blood to be considered a native. You have native ancestry, and that's where it ends. You don't have enough native blood to be enrolled in the, in the group. And that's fine. Because I'm pretty sure I don't. And I've never really, I've never really expressed joining the tribe. You know? I mean, I will gladly join one if they offer. If they say, hey, look, you got enough blood and we want to enroll you. And I'll say, okay. I have two conditions and only two conditions. The first condition is I keep my name. Echo Fan Grey Wolf is mine because I got to choose it. It wasn't my government name that my parents also had to have that they had to give government names. So... I keep Echo Fan Grey Wolf, period. Even if I'm not enrolled, that's my fucking name. Because it suits me. And it's also in alphabetical order, E, F, G. And I like it a lot. I am Echo Fan Grey Wolf, period. My government name is James William Shinger. The military has that on lock. And until I'm 60, I won't be legally changing my name at fucking all. And the only way I would legally change my name is if I can work it out with the military and my school, because of my um, degree in police science, 
that we can re-up it. No. It's like, yeah, we can change your name to Echo Van Grey Wolf and all your military shit will still be yours. Why didn't you tell us I was part native? It's like, uh, I'm from Virginia. Being mixed was not a thing in 1973. It was a thing, but it was it was a classification issue. No. There's a lot of pretendians bringing that up, by the way. So I might as well bring that up, too. Without a doubt, there is some reclassification issues in Virginia. Uh, you can research on that. It has been brought to my attention that my great-grandmother was re re reclassified. However, she was not reclassified as a Negro. She was classified as a mulatto. All right? Now, for a certain time frame, mulatto also could have been used as mixed native. So, we're, we're, we're there, and I still got a lot more research to do. So, that being said, I know that I have white in my family. Without a doubt, my mom's dad's dad was white. That's why he looked like he was a white man with a tan. My mom is very white presenting. My mom's mom is brown like me. My mom's other siblings, they don't get any darker than me. They're actually as dark as I am. They're this color, not this color. So, you know, we know we're mixed. And we're generationally mixed. So, that's why I said I probably don't have enough native blood on either side to count. I just want the truth. And I just want to acknowledge my native blood. I don't have to be enrolled. But if they offer it, the second condition is that, um, you know, everybody treats me like I'm actually a native. And not some unpure blood demon. And the reason why I say that is because I tell you guys the story of the two natives who literally looked me in my face and said, we don't want any unpure natives messing with our niece. I didn't handle it well, as I say, all the time. I threatened to push one into a tree. I threatened to push the other one into oncoming traffic. So, you know, I, I reacted without thinking. I didn't push them into a tree. I didn't push them into oncoming traffic because I wouldn't be able to have this conversation because technically that would be murder. So, but I wanted to so bad. I've been mixed all my life. I don't need you rubbing that shit in my face. And then, you know, like I said, I should have been using my native heritage to get acting work. It just never dawned on me because I wanted to represent mixed people. All right? I wanted people to understand I'm more than just black. I'm also native. I'm also white. And so all of the characters that I wrote wound up being mixed black and native or mixed black and Chinese. Because a lot of people thought that I was Chinese. Might be because of the Kung Fu. I've also been mistaken for a Samoan. I've also been mistaken for a Mexican, and it was before I found out that Mexicans are actually Native Americans, too. You guys just don't want to acknowledge that shit, but the story was really simple. I was in Spanish class. My Spanish teacher was a Spanish person from Spain. She was not Mexican. She was white, and she was from Spain. She literally looked me in the face and said, you know, James, or Heine, you know the answers are in the back of the book. I said, well, ma'am, I can't learn that way can't even read Spanish. How do you think I'm going to cheat in the back of the book? And then she looked me in the face and said, I've never met a Mexican who can't speak Spanish. Now, at the time, I didn't know the Mexicans were Native Americans. So my quick-witted dumbass said, first and foremost, that's racist as fuck and it's rude. And I am not a Mexican. I'm actually part Native American. So, again, in my ignorance, I'm in my 20s, man. No excuse for ignorance, but I was in my 20s. And I was high-tempered and um she's like what you're not mexican i said no ma'am i'm not mexican and you should get some culture i'm actually part native american and it, it blew her mind i guess she didn't know we still exist but but i mean it was what it was man and then i left the class and never came back <laughs> but i didn't want to learn spanish anyway I wanted to learn Japanese, but Spanish was all the school had to offer. They canceled the Japanese class at the last minute because only two people wanted to learn it, me and somebody else. And the teacher, and its evilness, just didn't want to teach two people in class. I get it. But at the same time, man, you know, you got me fucked up. <laughs> now, at the end of the day, indigenous erasure is happening on TikTok. Black erasure is happening on TikTok. 
and it is being done by the same group of black people who are saying they are aboriginal to America, yet they have no ties to the land, and I'm sure they take a DNA test just like mine, it's going to have some African in it. Now, I'm working on my 23andMe for my hoplo group and my phenotype. And once I can get all that shit, I will print all that shit out, and then I'll have it. No. And the uh, people who are doing the indigenous erasure and the black erasure, are, they're um, constantly talking about how there's no, um, um, the, the, like the DNA test and shit won't, um, won't stand up in a court of law. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't really need it to go for a court of law. But um, the um, BIA, while we're on the subject, the BIA literally told me that even if I was 50% Native American, that they didn't really give a fuck about DNA. You understand? What they told me was I have to be adopted by a tribe if we can prove that I'm part of the tribe, and if not, I have to be adopted by a different tribe. I've been on this journey for quite some time, y'all. It has been a... um. It hasn't been a joy ride, I can tell you that. It's been a bang up of a ride, and I do mean it has been a bang up of a ride. So, that being said, you know, you kind of got to, you got to just go with the flow and throw shit on the wall until something sticks. It's pretty much the gist of it. Now, I'm in the video on the topic because I went way off topic, so I do apologize to the 312 of you. The um the black people that may be mixed like me. They don't phenotypically look like me, but they phenotypically look like black people. They have black hair. You guys know I grease the shit out of my hair. My hair is naturally curly. Um, I grease it with Royal Crown, who should give me a job. I straighten it, I wear a ponytail every day. I braid my ponytail. I do what is necessary. I don't pass judgment on these people, but they are some misguided fucks. If they're mixed, they need to reconnect the way I'm trying to do it, instead of just all out saying, no, we're going to fuck our black people. Just put those black people over there. Fuck those motherfuckers. That's what we're doing. You can't acknowledge one of you without acknowledging all of you. And I know I told you all the movie about the movie. I know I told you all the dream about the time that I was three people at once. I was the native guy, the black guy, and the white guy. I accepted my native heritage way back in the fifth grade when I learned I was part native. My black heritage and my white heritage have been the problems of my life the most. Which, now talking to people about dreams, I understand that now. And once I had accepted all three of my heritages, I never had dreams like that anymore. No. I've always accepted my native heritage once I found out that I was native. As far as my black heritage, I think due to the most racism coming from black people, it's why I had that problem, never being black enough. My white heritage, same concept, but just not as many racist white people that I've encountered as I've encountered racist black people. Hopefully that makes sense, and if you're black and I've offended you, I'm sorry. My experience is still valid. It doesn't mean that I need to grow up and hate black people, because I've never grown up hating black people had some issue with some black women, but I don't hate black people, all right? We're not going to go into my dating life and why I don't date black women, because these knives didn't exist back when I needed them, okay? Now, as for everything else, you know, I want the indigenous solution to stop. I want these aboriginal people to either walk off the planet, fall into outer space, since they probably are flat earthers too, just step right on off there. Or, if you're mixed native, start the journey. Start the fucking journey. Do exactly what I'm doing. Ask questions. Look around. Try to find people who can answer your questions. And until you do, you know, stop telling everybody, oh, we're the aboriginals. We don't have any African DNA. Science says that most people of color, specifically black people, have come out of Africa. And these have been topics on YouTube, and not YouTube, but on TikTok 
for the better part of six months, six to eight months. I try to avoid it all the time, but they always come up on my FYP, uh, the dude Eminem, the girl BFR, all this crap. And I'm like, you know, I don't know how to block them. I really wish I did, but I don't. So, But they are the main ones because the girl BFR believes that Genghis Khan came to America, which is why we have the natives who look Siberian. And she starts talking about chinky eyes. I have been accused of having chinky eyes and some other stuff. So I'm like, okay, you know, there's some times and some places where you just need to shut the fuck up. And she is completely uneducated and needs to shut the fuck up. Genghis Khan, he never made it out of Asia to America. He did conquer some places, but America was not the place that he came and conquered. Yeah. But this this woman, man, may God have mercy on her soul. And then you got other people who are um, giving death threats to people because they want to be native so bad they're giving death threats to people. Like, you know what, man? It's really not worth all of that shit. No, it's not. But, I mean, some people, you just can't convince. I mean, you literally can't convince. And so, I mean, it's going to be what it's going to be. But what can you do? There's meetings about this shit almost every fucking time you turn around. Fucking damn TikTok. It needs to stop. God only knows if it ever will. But they're also making it so that people who look like me, who are trying to reconnect with people who they are calling Siberian natives, who are the ones who really earn the war bonnets, they really do the shit that they're supposed to do. Just not want to connect with people like me. Which is why I need indigenous erasure to stop. That being said, I'm Echo Fan Grey Wolf. This is Kung Fu Havoc number two. Be seeing ya.